The New Mexico Department of Game and Fish presents A Century of Conservation, a look back at New Mexico's first 100 years of fish and wildlife management. When New Mexico became a state in 1912, the state's elk herd numbered about 20 animals and Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep were missing entirely from the state. Other populations were depleted too, and early conservationists needed to restore many species. New Mexico obtained elk from Yellowstone National Park in Colorado. They were shipped by train and released into the mountains. Elk releases continued through the 1960s as the animals were brought back to mountain range after mountain range. Today, New Mexico has a population of approximately 80,000 elk, and hunting is a popular activity. The animals provide excellent meat, a true challenge for hunters, and a thrill for anyone who hears their bugles or sees a bull with its towering antlers. At statehood, New Mexico's streams were depleted. Miners fished with dynamite and extensive logging for railroad ties and mine timbers also removed stream cover and contributed to intensive erosion. To restore fish populations, New Mexico built its first fish hatchery at Lisboa Springs near Pecos in 1921. The hatchery is still in production today, although it has been expanded and refurbished several times. Five additional hatcheries help provide millions of fish for anglers each year. The shortgrass prairie of the state's eastern side is part of the Great Plains. In the 1930s, when pronghorn antelope had declined to just a few thousand head, the New Mexico Department of Game and Fish became the first state to successfully capture and transplant antelope. It also was the first state to make movies of the operation. Antelope were transferred to ranches across the state in an effort to find suitable habitat and increase their numbers and range. In the late 1930s, wildlife also benefited from the dedication of federal tax dollars to wildlife restoration. The Pittman-Robertson Act would eventually provide funding for the restoration of numerous species and the purchase of more than 150,000 acres of wildlife habitat. The Wildlife and Sport Fish Restoration Program, managed by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and funded by excise taxes on hunting, fishing, boating, and shooting equipment, accounts for almost a third of the department's annual budget. With antelope secure on the plains and elk recovering in the forests, in the 1940s it was time for New Mexico to turn its attention to its highest peaks. The earliest releases of Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep failed, probably due to the small numbers of animals. During the 1950s, however, Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep were successfully released in the Sandia Mountains near Albuquerque. The Sandia herd grew large enough to allow limited hunting but eventually it exceeded the carrying capacity of the habitat. In the 1960s, excess sheep were captured in the Sandias and released in the Pecos Wilderness near Santa Fe. That population grew large enough to supply sheep to the Wheeler Peak Wilderness, the Latir Wilderness, the Rio Grande Gorge, and other locations across the state. Smoky Bear was already established as a wildfire prevention symbol by 1950. But a large forest fire in Capitan Gap left a small cub clinging to a burned tree that year. The injured cub was transported to Santa Fe to be treated by a veterinarian. Eventually, he became the living symbol of forest fire prevention and was flown by the Department of Game and Fish to the National Zoo in Washington, D.C. After living a long life at the National Zoo, Smokey was returned to Capitan where he rests in peace at Smokey Bear Historical State Park. The conservation and restoration of many species takes decades, with many challenges along the way. The Department of Game and Fish restricted angling for Gila trout in the 1960s, and the federal government made the fish one of the original species protected by the Endangered Species Act. Because much of the Gila trout's habitat is in the Gila wilderness, recovering this species requires numerous week-long pack trips with mules and horses to do surveys and stream reclamation. After four decades of recovery, the Gila trout was downlisted to threaten during 2006, and limited fishing was allowed. The department is determined to continue the efforts to restore this prized native fish. Until the early 1970s, cougars were not protected by New Mexico law. There were no seasons, no bag limits, and no license was required to hunt them. Once the predators were given protection as a game species, their numbers started to climb. Hunting is allowed, but cougars with kittens are protected and under zone management, hunt areas close if harvest limits are reached. 
because of the difficulty of hunting cougars in New Mexico's arid climate, harvest limits are rarely reached and the Department of Game and Fish has to kill some cougars every year that represent a threat to humans. Like the Gila trout, the Rio Grande cutthroat has declined in abundance. Much more common than the Gila trout, the Rio Grande cutthroat lives in the northern reaches of the state's waters. Keeping it off the endangered species list has been an ongoing project of the Department of Game and Fish since the 1980s. The fish are spawned at the Seven Springs Hatchery and are released in suitable waters across the northern mountains. This is a beautiful fish, as red as a New Mexico sunset that truly exemplifies wilderness. Catching a cutthroat is a thrill for any angler, and not just because of their beauty. The high country streams where they live are not what many folks envision when they hear the words New Mexico. The state mammal is the black bear, a species first protected in the 1920s. New Mexico is home to approximately 6,000 black bears in 2012, although they are rarely seen in the wild. To learn more about the secretive nature of the black bear, the Department of Game and Fish contracted for an eight-year study of the species. The Wildlife and Sport Fish Restoration Program helped pay for the study of both northern and Gila country bear populations. The information developed is still being used to determine population estimates and bear hunting seasons. Black bears have expanded their territory since the first surveys done in the 1920s, returning to mountain ranges where they were once absent. Today, they often make their presence known by raiding trash cans and dumpsters in mountainous areas of the state and even in Albuquerque. To keep the public safe, the department is now taking a more aggressive stance against bears habituated to human garbage and bird feeders. River otters were returned to the Rio Grande in 2008. These large aquatic weasels had been missing for decades, but now they thrill river runners and others who enjoy recreation along the big river. Appropriate for New Mexico's centennial year, the State Game Commission delisted the desert bighorn sheep from the state's list of endangered species in 2012. It was a crowning achievement for a century of conservation that brought back much of the wildlife heritage of New Mexico. Decades of captive rearing in the desert near Lordsburg, control of cougars, and translocation operations from Arizona and Mexico brought this species back to New Mexico's desert mountain ranges. This would not have been accomplished without the support, both financial and political, of the men and women who buy hunting, trapping, and fishing licenses in New Mexico. None of this would have been possible without the hundreds of millions of dollars contributed through the purchases of hunting and fishing tackle, those federal excise taxes that pay for bear studies, hatchery management, recovery of rare fish, and transplants of majestic bighorn sheep. The New Mexico Department of Game and Fish wants to thank you outdoorsmen and women for making our century of conservation possible.